Elegantly turned out in the signature blue and white of this event, the Kenilworth course hosted 18 races over the two-day festival. With a fashion and social scene set against the action playing out on track, the organizers felt sure 2019 would be their best year yet. Queen's Play has been going on for 158 years, and five years of that with the white and blue theme. I mean, what's the ethos around it? So Lomoran took over as sponsor 15 years ago. We, when we sponsored, really wanted to bring people back to racing. And that's the most important thing for us on the two-day festival that we host now. The blue and white is so much a part of who we are. It's the racing colors of Drakenstein Stud, which is at Lomorani State. So what we want to do is have Kenilworth awash with blue and white and have people come and support the racing industry. It's a fantastic sport. We've got a day of such exciting races ahead. History is going to be made today, and we really hope everyone enjoys it along with us. The marrying of the two, the horse racing and how big this has become, what has it meant for horse racing in South Africa? It's a day to come and you know, uplift people and you come here, it, the beautiful wine, fantastic thoroughbreds, nice people and just enjoy a day in Cape Town and go home and say, you know, that's why I live in Africa. After the first day's beach party theme, celeb guests were in the mood for high fashion. What does the, the Queen's Plate event mean to you? It's such a classy event and it's so proudly South African. I mean, they were even tweeting this week to say, please support South African designers, please support local. And that's what I love about the event. Sir, you are one of the big pillars when it comes to fashion in the country. What does this event mean to fashion? I think what the great thing about um, the Queen's Plate is that it gives people an opportunity to dress up really early in the year so you can get into the full swing right in the beginning and you can keep carrying on with that trajectory for the rest of the year. So I think it's really nice. What I also love about this, it's very stylish because you've only got two colors to wear, blue and white, and blue and white go very well together. So I think you almost can't go wrong. You are looking amazing in this outfit. What inspired it? So I wanted to play on a suit and a little bit of lace, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, Ryan Keys and I worked for two days on this, and it came out. I'm shocked. I'm feeling a bit bad because I thought I was the only one who's going to be rocking a white suit around here, but you had to steal my shine. No, but don't feel bad. This is this is good. There's a synergy, right? I'm, I mean, if we just walk around, this will be our theme. Fascinating. Yeah? Yeah, but oh, 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 I'm married. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Look at you, you look amazing. Take me through it. Thank you so much. I'm Trace by Togo Masondo, uh, DM Bespoke. Uh, I said, like, let me go easy and be chill today. So I said, let's go cream and play with the color still. So from the jacket to the pants and a bit of pop of brown, complementing the shades, why not? So I'm um, here to have fun. How does an event like Queen's Plate kind of earmark the year moving forward? I think it's such a great staple event for people in the fashion industry because we get to put local fashion designers on an amazing, amazing platform. I'm wearing a local designer today. She's never been given a platform like this and I'm just happy to be able to provide that channel for her. This outfit looks good. Mm. What inspired it? They always said to you when you come here to LQP that give us a touch of blue. And I felt that this year I'm going to go as much blue as possible with different shades and still look semi-casual but enjoying it at the same time. And you are looking casual, effortlessly stylish is the word, I think. The one that I wanted to do is what Faze Ollis does is show some chest cleavage. <laughs> so <laughs> I tried to unbutton as many buttons as possible. Uh, listen, I'm not going to try and compete with you on that because I feel like I will be blown out very quickly. Very, very quickly. Says the man on some calendar, but I don't mention which one. Everybody, the ladies know, the ladies know. There was a strong field in the Queen's Plate fashion stakes, where Elizabeth Charleston's gardenia-style fascinator took best hat. Best-dressed woman went to the chic, elegant Catherine Fivas. I'm standing next to the two bells of the ball, guys. You look amazing. Who are you wearing? I'm wearing a um, young and upcoming African designer, Imprint ZA. I actually called them quite last minute. I was so preoccupied and enjoying December and they just whipped it up in no time. And I'm so proud to be wearing something purely South African. And the other bell, your hat is beautiful. I mean, it's so striking. How long did it take to put it together? Well, the base was from my milliner in New Zealand and then I had to create something striking above it. So I've been in South Africa for two months 
months now. And as soon as I arrived, I started looking around the stores, seeing what ingredients I could use for millinery. So this was finished last night, around about seven o'clock with a glass of wine. Our presenter, Fazile, was here to cover the action, not be the story. That was until the judges picked him as a finalist for best dressed man. Dr. Mkise duly won the title, much to the delight of MC Leanne Williams. What keeps you coming back? It is the very first fashion and horse racing event of the year and it's the very first time that us as people in the industry get to kind of hang out with one another as the year begins. So it's really great and it's fun, it's light-hearted, we get to dress up and that's really why I keep coming back year after year after year. Get to, I get to see my peers who by the way win best dressed competitions like they do and uh, just have a good time. You've been coming to Queen's Plate for some time now, what keeps pulling you back? Well, it's the vibe, obviously the fashion and the music and now and then the horses, just to look at them because I love horses, so, you know. <laughs> so I'm not going to ask you who is going to win and whether or not you got money. Whoever wins is the winner. <laughs> Out on the track, a thrilling showdown between the country's 10 best horses and jockeys saw Do It Again live up to his name giving jockey Richard Faree an impressive win. How does this one feel? I mean, I know you won the first one, now the Queen's Plate, the big one. What's the feeling? Well, it's a surreal feeling, you know. I've been living in Cape Town for 12 years and every jockey wants to win this race. It's such a prestigious race, um, everybody involved, and it's such a big lead up into this race. And I'm just glad everything went, went accordingly and we, and we won the big one. Everyone felt like a winner, and a weekend at the races was the ideal way to pretend you were still on summer holiday.